Okay, let's move to a game uh, on Friday in the American Conference. It'll be at the XL Center in Hartford, Connecticut. You get Temple against Memphis. Good matchup because it's the number four seeded Temple against number five seeded Memphis. They did win one time this season. And Temple won at Memphis. They were a three and a half point underdog. They won 61 to 60. The game was defensive oriented under the total of 125. And boy, look at the defensive numbers for the game. Memphis at home shot 38%. Just 4 of 19 from long range. Temple won the game, but shot just 33%. It was abysmal from long range, 3 of 14. And remember, Memphis had a halftime lead of 10 at the game, and Memphis came back from a 38-28 halftime deficit. Memphis not playing good right now, 1-3 one and three, one, one and three run. You look at the last couple of games, they did win at UConn by a point, 54-53, but they also lost at Cincinnati, 77-65. And then they were at home against number 21 SMU and lost by nine points. So, um, Jeff, uh, they really haven't stepped up well in competi uh, competition. Plus, they're on a 4-9 run. What's going on with this team? Yeah, this is not going to be a game I'll probably – it's not going to be an entertaining game, I don't think. It's just one of those two teams that's going to be a grind-out, uh, terrible shooting game. Tep was 1-10-12, 9-3 against the spread. The three top scorers are guards led by uh, Will Cummings at 14.1. Uh, all th the three top scorers shoot less than 40% from the floor. It, it, you just don't. 20 years ago, you would never have seen that, but today, that's the way college basketball is today. Uh, it's, it's just it, it's just depressing sometimes when you see some of these stats and how bad the, sh the shooting is in college basketball these days. But that's the way it goes. Tigers had do have the better offense, 44% uh, uh, while holding opponents to 39%, which is the same as Tempo. Uh, forward uh, Austin Nichols is out with an uh, ankle injury. Guard Rashawn Powell was questionable with an illness. Tigers lost three out of four. They looked bad on Sunday at Cincinnati. They're five and nine against the spread of the last 14 games. So uh, in this game, uh, even though it's not going to be uh, a really a scintillating game, I'll probably, uh, if I had a bet, I would lean toward Temple, John. Yeah, Tigers are not only struggling to win, but they do have the injuries, as you meant. And then we got this uh, Temple team playing very well. Ten and two straight up run, eight, three and one against the spread. Look at the last three games. They beat Houston, allowing 54 points. They beat East Carolina, allowing 56 and then at home against UConn, three and a half point favorite. They won 75 to 63. So it's great defense, and they're getting it done offensively. So uh, Zach, is this going to be another close one or one sided? Is there a line out on this one right here? Yeah, uh, no, there's not. No, there's not. Okay. Um, this might be a game. I would definitely lean if this was a regular season game on Temple. Uh, I think they're going to be a tournament team. I think they're either the last four in the last four out right now. Memphis. Their season's been up and down, and I think right now they're a very vulnerable team with the injuries and uh, there's poor coaching right now with Josh Pashner. Um, they have athletes, but uh, Temple is one of those teams with Fran Dunphy. He has a system in place, a strong defensive team, and uh, they have uh, fantastic guards in Quentin DeCozzi and Will Cummings. So um, if I really don't see, unless Temple has some type of slip-up, which you don't see from a quality team, in conference tournament, if they have some type of slip up defensively, which has been their bread and butter for the last month and a half, I really don't see Memphis staying in this game. They're poor three point shooting. Um, they do have solid interior play, but I think Temple can uh, bog that down with uh, their bigs that they have um, and probably get this uh, cover if it's between two, two, three and a half. But this might even be one where you wait for a half timeline. That's one of the things I wanted to mention for conference tournaments. You're going to find value on some of these games just waiting for a halftime line because you've seen it, uh, Northern Iowa get down against Illinois State. You've seen uh, USC Upstate get down against North Florida. And I've been following these halftime lines uh, in conference tournaments for quite a while, but you're going to see teams come out flat. And there's something to be said when your season's on the line and it's going to end. You're going to come out and play uh, much stronger than you would have in the regular season. So I think Temple's one of those teams – Maybe they're down four or five points at halftime, and they'll come out like they did in the down 10 last time. They'll come out with a stronger sense of urgency and get that win. So if this line's between two, three and a half, I would pass on it, wait for that halftime line, maybe get uh, if they're down four or five points, you're going to get a minus six or something like that, which is going to be a better line value than that, that two, three and a half original line. And you think the Memphis coaches average to below average? You're not keen on it. Josh Pastner, if you watch their, the way Memphis finishes off halves, it's just absolutely awful. Uh -oh. uh, against Central Florida, they, they were up by 14, 16 points, blew it. They were up by only four at halftime. Uh, and then they were up by seven 
a little under two minutes to go against Central Florida. Blew it. They had to win the game in overtime. And if you look at the pattern, they're just, they're just not a very good team down the stretch of halves. But it's, it's more of so to do with the team balance right now. Um, he doesn't have the same recruits that he did when he first got there. And they just don't have the guard play at all or, or small forward. There are all the points come inside from uh, uh, two key guys. Well, Nichols is out and then uh, Goodwin. He's a, another key player that he's consistent. He can carry a team, but they're just too sporadic with the other key players. Well, that even uh, helps the analysis that I have because I'm leading toward Temple in this one. Uh, they already won the game at Memphis. Memphis on a 4-9 spread run. Memphis has that injury bug. But I like guard play, too. I mentioned the big men earlier. But guard play, a lot of people think that is the difference maker in tournament play. And what a terrific guard Temple has with Will Cummings. 14 points per game, 4.2 rebounds, and 4.3 assists per game. That's what you see a lot with senior leadership this time of the year, particularly with guards. They're not afraid to dish the ball off to teammates. Unselfish, and you can see that in assist totals. Will Cummings certainly have that. So I would lean definitely toward Temple in this one. I remember they were down by 10. They roared back. And despite missing 12 free throws in that first game, Temple still won the game straight up as a dog. So I think they will have an easier time against Memphis on Friday. All right, let's tell everybody what we have going on and how you get, get in touch with the, everybody over the weekend. You can go to jimfeist.com. And, uh, Jeff, you've got some college NBA games that are coming up for the weekend. Yeah, and you can get all NBA and college basketball all the way through uh, the NCAA championship game for $10. I'm going to give you... Uh, all the five-star plays in Cali Jam Pro, 10 bucks. Just call WSS at 1-866-575-8916, Plus, go to jimfives.com every day, and you'll get college NBA action. My best bet on the show will be uh, Vanderbilt, uh, but uh, that's my show best bet. But I'll have bigger plays online at jimfives.com, also at LBSS, 1-866-575-8916. All right, before the college basketball season started, Zach told me that he loves it. It's his favorite sport, and he does very well at it. Well, his record right now, 109-78-5. Zach, you must love March Madness, and how can folks find you for the weekend? Yeah, March Madness, I'm, I'm getting excited to enter some of these uh, uh, contests here in Vegas. We've got the Station Casino Contest, and um, Jay Cornegay has one for Westgate entries. I'm excited about getting into those and seeing what I can do in them. But uh, uh, JimFice.com, I'm going to definitely probably have more conference tournament plays than I do March Madness. Um, but I think there's better value in the day slate than in March Madness. You're going to have some tighter games. But uh, my focus will probably be more on the NIT and CBI, as so there is better value there than March Madness. One thing I wanted to mention, just advice, a lot of people are going to be traveling into Las Vegas or they're going to be looking to bet throughout the day of these conference tournaments. Make sure you don't get trapped into that. That's just like uh, doing that on college football Saturday. It's just not picking a game all of a sudden because you win your first game at 9 o'clock in the morning. Make sure you have your plays ready the day before um, because if you start doing that, you're going to lose throughout the day. So. Uh, be smart about it, especially if you're coming into town in Vegas. Don't get trapped in the uh, sports book lore that I see people do. And so start talking to everybody else and uh, hearing everybody else say certain games. That's not going to win you games. you got to make sure you do your time and your research a uh, day in advance. Or come check us out on JimFice.com. All right, and Jim Feist on the release. High Roller Platinum plays online very often. He did last Friday. That was the Celtics. They were an underdog at New Orleans, won the game straight up. He also hit another... Game of the year. That was his in NBA interconference game of the year Sunday. That was the Utah Jazz, 95 to 88, as a dog at Brooklyn. Jim is now 14, 5 and 1 with these NBA games of the year. He also has March Madness tournament package specials right through play right through April 8th with him. You can find these plays and more at jimfice.com. All right, good luck with the games, everyone, and we'll see you next week with another edition of the Pro Line version of college basketball. We'll see you.